Hi, welcome back to Marnie and Sue's Peep Show where we pull back the curtains and let you see inside of our businesses. And today we're going to find out what happened with Sue and her flash sale. She did something last week where you gave people an opportunity to get something cool for $7. How did that go? Yeah. And you know, just um, you know, we promised that we were going to pull back the curtains on our business and let you know what's really going on. So, we will say to you that we are both very frazzled today. Marnie was having trouble getting her kids home in order to start the the hang up for us today and she was controlling the dashboard so I couldn't start it. But she actually made it on time and then for whatever reason, my MacBook Pro would not let me connect up. So we fiddled with that for a while and then I had to jump on my PC and um, I don't ever use my PC for Google Hangouts so I was trying to finagle around and figure out how to make it work. And not only that, I double booked myself today about three different ways from Sunday so I was supposed to be three different places at once and that makes me feel bad because I hardly ever do that which only tells me I've been running too fast lately. So um, that's how it goes sometime in business and um, we just wanted to share that with you because that's what we're here to do is just say what do we do when you have you know what do we do and what can help you when you have days when you feel like things are really ragged and they're not they're not seamless and they're not not working well for you so i'm going to talk a little bit about the flash sale and then maybe marnie can talk about how she manages all of the things that she has on her plate because she does have transportation for kids from school that she has to work into her day and I don't have that so that might be something she could share with you how she manages that that would be helpful so I think we talked last time Marnie did I talk about doing that I was gonna try the flash sale or did we ever talk about that at all do you remember um, yeah you've mentioned that you were gonna try it and you're gonna send it out okay so what I did um, this is something that you can do oh that's right we talked about how it can warm up your list I decided that I was going to send out um, a $7 offer to my list with an upsell to another $7 offer so that they could double down if they wanted to. And um, then uh, I, on Tuesday last week, I sent in my easing to my clients uh, a, um, a notice that on Friday to look for getting an email from me that had an offer in it that was going to be a flash sale, a seven dollar flash sale. And then on Friday, early, early morning, we put out a broadcast to my entire list and we offered them for seven dollars my product, Simple Business Plan for Solo Professionals, which is an e-product that normally sells for nineteen ninety five. And then we offered a seven dollar upsell. If a person bought that, then they were also offered um, my step-by-step -step list building campaign product for seven dollars which is actually a forty seven dollar product so that is a really good deal it's a really meaty product so for me I was kind of disappointed in the flash sale results I have thousands and thousands of people on my list I think about two hundred and thirty maybe, maybe opened the email out of all those thousands and I sold 38 products, um, 10 of those were the upsells. So I had 28 people who took the first $7 deal and then I had another 10 people of that of those 28 uh, who actually took the upsell. So a little bit less than one third, a little bit less than one third took the upsell and bought both products and two thirds just bought the one product for $7. So out of the thousands of people who are on my list, to me, that's not a very big return. The good thing, though, you can look at it a couple of different ways. And the good thing is that um, some of those, most of those people had never bought anything from me before at all. So they now have become clients who have actually taken out their wallet for a big seven bucks. And um, now I can set up an autoresponder series to offer them other things and perhaps knowing that they bought a seven dollar product I will offer them only low cost things and not an opportunity to coach with me directly because that's at a higher price point so I'm playing with that and trying to decide what I want to set up in my autoresponder series I'm not going to continue to offer just deal after deal after deal because I don't want to discount my products that much they're worth more than that 
and it took me many, many years of experience to create them. But I might do another flash sale. There's a lot of different things. A lot of my clients had already bought that product. Um, maybe it's just that the market has changed and they're more interested in products that are about the reinvention stuff or how to hold your ground like we were talking about last week so it could be any one of a variety of things and you know I tell my own clients you have to try things about seven different ways before you decide it's a bad idea um, so yes I went my goal was to make a thousand dollars in sales and obviously I didn't hit that I hit right at two hundred and fifty dollars so from that point I didn't like it but I do have a small tiny segment of my list that is now rewarmed up so that's the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the sad of the Friday flash sale. And Marnie, if you have anything to say about that, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about it, too. I, I haven't tried one like that, so I was really in, intrigued to hear how it would go for you. And so yeah. roughly you're getting, you said you had about 4,000 people, 200 opened it. Yeah. And about 28 of those bought. Yeah. So of the ones who opened it, that's not too bad. What is that about a little over a ten percent response? Is yeah. that am I my math right? Yeah, and it could have been the title of the email. I think I titled it seven dollars today only or something like that. I don't know. I try to keep my email subjects short, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I mean, if that were you, would you repeat it with just those results? I think I would try it again another time with a different headline and leave out. You know how you can now you can say send to this list, but don't send to these people. You're right. Tell it not to send to the people who already bought it, so they don't get it again. But then or try uh, a different product entirely. Or oh, you're saying use the same product and just a different title to see if it was the title rather than the product. Could be the headline. Yeah, and that's a good point for everybody. That's a good teaching point that Marnie just um, said. Um, the that that's really testing and when you test something if you change the title you want to keep the offer the same because you don't want um, you if you change more than one parameter of it then you don't know which parameter made it improve or made it go get worse so you only want to change one thing at a time when you're tweaking offers if you change three or four things then you don't know which of the things that you changed were was the magic thing that made it worse or the magic thing that made it better. So you only want to change one thing at a time. Now there is a train of thought. There are some internet online marketers who will say, well if you get the sales, what difference does it make if you change five things? What do you care which one was the thing that made the sales go higher? Well I care because I want to be able to replicate that. But right. there is a train of thought out there that you just change everything and if it works well then you're happy and you take the money and go home. But that's, I would rather know okay this title pulls better I mean this email subject line pulls better than this one or it was the the offer the actual product too many of my people already had bought that so this new product over here they bought more I want to know what makes it work so that I can replicate that because the success of, of an online marketing business is be able to find what works and then rinse and repeat it keep on doing it over and over again with different stuff right Marnie? Right. Another test you might try is to flip it and give the list building product for seven dollars and the other one is the upsell. Right. Which I could do and I might do that. So I might try it again in a couple of weeks and if I do we can talk about it here on this show but I won't do it again this week. I don't have time anyway. This bit, I'm real busy this week and next week so it won't happen anytime real soon. So, so Marty, I don't know. Um, you know, you can. Ha I know that you constantly, in the afternoon at least, balance. You know, getting your work done and working with clients, along with picking up your kids and getting them to their jobs and stuff. So, I don't know if you have any words of wisdom about how to manage that. But I know that a lot of the people on our list are people who work at home and who have children. So, if you have any words of wisdom, since I don't only have to manage my dog and Bill, <laughs> then I can't really add to that conversation. <laughs> um, well, I, I was thinking about that as you suggested it. Um, the The biggest thing that I've had to do is schedule things very, you know, I put all the personal stuff in. When I've got to pick up who and who has what work schedules and everything, that goes on first. And then I go in and I put when I want to go to the gym. 
because yeah. there's certain days that I want to do that. So I put that in to make sure I do that. And then um, that didn't leave me a lot of time. I have these little short squatty days <laughs> to work with. So uh, I have started to, like yesterday, I wanted to just randomly call some customers and see how they were doing with their businesses and invite them to my webinars this week. So I blocked out on my schedule from say 11 to 2. I was just going to get on the phone and make calls. Yeah. So I scheduled those things just like I would schedule an appointment for a consult. If I don't do that, then I sort of sit there, you know, I've got this precious time and I don't want to not use it wisely. So scheduling even those type of things onto my uh, calendar makes a big difference. You know, I think that's a good point. Whether you have kids or you don't have kids, you really, it is a really smart move to schedule time to work on certain specific things. And, um, you know, reaching, having a time in your monthly schedule where you are reaching out and talking to either existing clients or previous clients, asking them how they're doing, um, seeing if they need help with anything else, seeing how their business is going, seeing what trends that they're noticing, all of that is valuable for maintaining client relationships and just kind of helping to keep your ear to the ground. And Marnie is actually one of the few online marketers I know who regularly schedules time to do that. She did that over the summer as well. I remember, Marnie, that you did that over the summer as well. It's a great way to ask a question of some of your people if you're trying to take a survey but you really want to get to certain people and get their particular opinions because they are your, are your more ideal client. That's a good way to do it too. So if you have trouble picking up the phone and talking to people, it is a skill that you need to really learn and come up on because it will definitely help you keep in touch with people and build your business. Yeah, and I kind of I like to keep it relaxed. Like, hey, I'm just decided to call a few of my clients, see how you're doing, what's new with you and your business. I just make it really friendly, like. Yeah. And I did want to let them know about my webinars. I'm like, you you've seen email open rates, right? <laughs> just on what we talked. So I thought, well, and I have a couple free webinars this week if they're interesting to you. So I left a lot of messages because I just got voicemails, but I got real people some and I got some really cool insights on what they're doing with their businesses and a lot of them are taking their businesses in completely different directions. So it was good to get a feel for their needs and what, you know, what they're doing. Right. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to do that, honestly. And I think that that also helps. The more uh, we can develop our skills in talking with clients directly, the more we will also be able to sell our programs or services because a mistake that I see a lot of people who are solo professionals make is they want to fill a live event that's a pretty high-end live event or they want to fill a program that is a pretty high-end program. Maybe it's a retreat you know, over in Hawaii or maybe it's a year-long mastermind that's at a you know, $10,000 or $15,000 level, or maybe it's a live event where the ticket is five or $600. The only way these days you're going to fill those is to get on the phone and talk to people directly and ask them if they would be interested in it rather than sending email after email after email. So you can have a good email series and you can have even some videos about whatever it is you're trying to sell. But in the end, either you or your staff are going to have to get on and call people and invite them to attend and to pull out their credit card. That's just how you have to do it. And in fact, Marnie, the other day, you know, I've been on Fabienne Fredrickson's list for a long, long time, and I've worked with her before. I've done a VIP day with her before back years ago in a small group setting. And she knows me, and I know her. Um, she used to be one of Allie's clients back a long time ago. And for the first time last week, um, I had been watching one of her video series that led to an offer to join her for her next live event. And lo and behold, I actually got a call from one of her team asking me if I had had time to watch the video and wanting to know if I had any questions. And they were obviously wanting to lead up to, would you be interested in attending the live event? And I, it wasn't for me. I wasn't interested in attending it. but. 
um, you know, she had her staff calling people. So everybody is having to do that now to fill their seats, and you're going to have to do it too if you're planning a really higher end program that you're offering people. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Got to get outside of our comfort zones, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do have to get outside of our comfort zones a little bit. Um, do you have anything to to tell people about like what your webinars are this week? Because there might be people who want to join them, or um, any last thoughts from your your week by week by week creating a product that you felt like didn't really go as well as when you did it all in one week. Um. Yeah, I have two webinars this week. I normally don't do this, but I thought, well, I'm going to just go ahead. So Wednesday, I'm doing one on the seven biggest stumbling blocks that entrepreneurs face and how to break through them. So that one is on Wednesday at 1 Eastern. And then on Thursday, I'm doing another uh, free webinar on how to create a product in a week or less. So that one's giving you the basics of how to create a product fast. And it's at 1 on Thursday. Um, the main thing, the interesting thing that I've discovered from doing that product creation, I did one of them intensive in a week and where we met every day for five days, twice a day, morning and afternoon. Okay, And it, it was a lot. It was intense. But those people got better results, higher quality results, and uh, got more done than the people who took it and spread it out over three weeks mm -hmm. where they were going once a day for three weeks. Yeah. So um, I'm working toward another, I call it my high octane version of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was watching a um, tele seminar or webinar from Kendall Summerhawk yesterday and she was talking about how people um, will not only pay more for intensives but they get better results from intensives, things that are done and that make them take ac action fast in a concentrated format, they actually get better results. And how uh, having a clear system to guide people through instead of letting them lead, because sometimes in intensives we we let the person come and okay, what are you working on, and we let them lead. But instead, having a structure and a system, you take them through and keep them on task gets better results. And I found that to be true from what I'm doing. Well, that's yeah. It's and Kendall knows her stuff. I mean, if she if she has found that in her own experience, I would definitely trust that to be true. Um, what I've noticed is, if you go to a class and then the implementation of that class is on your own time, then it's really hard to sit down and take the time to really do that. And an example for me is um, a good friend of mine is a very is a wonderful Pinterest expert, Lisa Satora, and she um, was teaching a small group of us this morning. She spent a couple of hours showing us what a business Pinterest account can do and all the, I mean, it's just amazing really. I mean, my mind just went, was just filled with ideas of what you could do and how you could build your list using Pinterest. Um, but you're right, that two hour class was over and I immediately had another phone call and then I had to grab some lunch and then I had to go do my half an hour of um, gym punishment on my leg and then I had to run over an early vote and then I had to come do another client call and then I had to jump on the peep show and after this I've got another client and then I've got to go grab some dinner and then I've got another client. So it's like when am I ever going to sit and do that Pinterest stuff? It really would have been better if I could have had a day where either she walked me through it and held my hand, one of those done with you things that we've been talking about in some of the previous peep shows, or if I had been able to mark off the whole day after her training while it was still fresh in my mind, mm -hmm. and then um, be able to sit down and implement all the things because I took a ton of notes and it's stuff that I'm really interested in. But that implementation is really hard if you've got a busy business and, you know, it, in a way, a lot of that I can hand off to a team member, but I have to set up the parameters of it first and teach them how I want it to be done because I'm the one who actually took the training. So, yeah, I agree with that. 
On the other hand, Marnie, I'm going to go down to Montgomery next week on Friday and Saturday to work uh, for two days with Paul Evans. And what he is going to do in those two days is take you through making you write your signature speech. And so when you leave in the end of that two days, you're going to have it. And you're also going to have a marketing plan for how to get out and deliver that and get paid for delivering it. And Paul, you know, he can really push you through a system. He's a, he's a really great systems guy. So I'm really looking forward to, in a way, I'll probably think, oh my gosh, I just went out of here. I have so many other things I need to be doing. But in another way, it's going to force me to spend two days to just sit there and just get it done, you know, just get it done. So I'll, you know, the next time, maybe two peep shows after this, I'll be able to talk about a little bit what that experience was like. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. I wanted to do that with uh, my product creation. I'm thinking of doing it in a live setting, at least locally, and just sit people down and make them do it in the classroom setting. Well, basically what you're doing, in my mind, what mm -hmm. you're doing with your one week intensive is you're actually doing a virtual live event. You're, you know, you're you're sitting with people twice a day from Monday through Friday and taking them through the components and then getting, you know, letting them have a few hours to work on it. Then that afternoon you're back on the phone with them. So really you're running a virtual live event but in my yeah. mind, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. If they will devote that time because yeah. like some of them want to go to the class, then go do whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely emphasizing in my descriptions <laughs> in the future that if you really want to maximize this, you budget the time throughout the day to this. You yeah, know, to the one week to it because if they do that, they get a lot better results. Like a couple of the people on there, they just marked everything off and that's what they did, and they got really good results. Right. And I think the problem that comes for people like us who have ongoing businesses that are busy and whether you have and even if you don't have the kid thing going or if you do have the kid thing going, it's just almost impossible. I mean, I would have to look months and months and months out to find a whole week that I didn't have anything scheduled. I mean, I'm scheduled for some of my stuff well into twenty fifteen. And so it's really hard to find that cut aside time. And that's why I think it's so important for people who are like you and me, Marnie, to have those personal business retreats built in where, you know, once a quarter I kind of erase everything for a whole week. And it's downtime for me, but it also is time that I can devote to really thinking about I may be laying on the beach or I may be, you know, in Italy or wherever. But I'm also really mulling over and thinking about some of the things that I just haven't had time to get to, or maybe I'm sitting down and implementing those things. So those little timeouts, that's really a good time to both have some rest and recreation, but also work on your business instead of in your business. I have enough stuff to do that I could cancel every client I had and just work on my business all the time. I've got so much content I want to develop, but obviously I can't do that because that doesn't make me money developing content. What makes me money is working with clients. So I can't just say, go away clients. I'm going to spend a week doing this. So there's always that blend, you know, that thing of how you work as Marnie says, really take advantage of small periods of time. For me, a lot of times, a couple of days a week, I'll wake up early and my mind is really full of things that I want to get done or that I really want to spend an hour to develop. And I'll just get up and before seven in the morning, I've got three or four hours solid done. When the house is quiet and I don't have any clients and I can just hit it. And then I feel like I've gotten a lot done before I even start my regular day with clients or whatever else I have going on. So if you're, you know, you can sometimes use that early morning energy. Some people use late at night energy. I'm not a late night. I'm not a night owl. I'm more of a morning person than I am a night owl. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but well, I do work at night. I, I got to stop by about nine though, or I start to really wilt. Yeah. Back. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I might take a break for dinner, and we might go out and walk Jake, and you know, go do an errand or something. And then, you know, I don't really want to just waste hours and hours in front of the TV. So I might come in and do another hour's worth of work. And I don't mind that. That's what I love about being an entrepreneur. You know, you get to be the boss of you and you get to set your own hours. And if they're strange, it doesn't matter. You know, it's you. So 
That's part of the deal. That's part of what makes it rich, right? Yep, that's it. <laughs> okay, well, do you have anything else to talk about today? I think we're good. We're okay. about at the 30-minute mark, so... Okay. Well, um, we're sorry for our late start today and for our feeling kind of frazzled at the first, but um, we do want to remind you that if you have a question you want us to answer on this show, you can send that question ahead of time to info at confidentmarketer.com and we will, like last week we had a client, a question from a, uh, somebody who watches the show and we, by the way, got a very nice note from him thanking us for answering that and saying it was really helpful. So you have us at your fingertips. All you have to do is write in or attend the show live and type a question in the chat box and we'll answer it for you. And I guess, Marnie, we'll let people know when we're going to do next week because I don't think we've watched, looked at our calendar yet. No, I don't think so. It'll be for the first of the week, though, because Thursday I'll be traveling to Montgomery, and then Friday and Saturday I'll be in Montgomery, so it probably will be Monday or Tuesday next week. All righty. Sounds okay. good. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.